Back here, 615 Sessions podcast from the DraftKings Sportsbook Studio. We are bringing the boom boom room to the 615 Sessions and bringing the big homie in along with us. We are al- yeah. we are on our first sleigh ride here yeah. on the podcast. Ron Slay of vol- yeah. Tennessee Volunteer fame is in the house. What up, Slay? Man, I'm good, Buck. I'm great, grateful to be on, man. I'm, I'm tired of seeing it. I'm tired of seeing it. I need the action. And, and I'm you, here. You, you are here. Ramon Foster keeps trying to show us bit- pictures of his past I don't life. know why he keep doing that, dude. Man, no. Dude here. The penny so, just uh, flows so easy for this dude, see, man. I see what we're doing right now. Amazing. What happened was when <laughs> I log on and asked me if I want my camera on and I hit the button to turn it on and I left the mouse there. So I'm not trying to flex, okay? I'm going to move my mouse away from my mouse cursor. See? <laughs> oh, my bad. That's see? We- see? See, what had happened was, <laughs> my bad. What had happened was. My bad. Boy, well, I tell you. It's, in, it's in the jeans. It's in the jeans. I'm bro. telling you right now, okay? My friends and close associates got all of 2021 to get their act together, okay? okay. Oh, yeah. Because by the time <laughs> October hit, I'm passing the applications for a new set. All right? So <laughs> if, if y'all don't get it together, I'm telling y'all, man, y'all going to be replaced. Starting with you, Ron. Hey, well, guess what? I, I'm a stamp. I got a stamp, and I'm a stamp void on my on mine. So you ain't got to worry about it. You can't you can't get rid of me if you try it, Buck. Man, everybody, listen, everybody's out here pulling the veto. I got no say over this thing. I'm just along. I'm just here. I'm just. This is your all's show. I'm just here to facilitate. Uh, Buck, you're a shoe in. Is all I'm telling you because I got nothing but generics around me. God, isn't that the damn truth? Uh, we have a ton to discuss. We have really not spent much time on this show with all things going on on rocky top new ad's new head coaches of the football team it's super bowl week but i don't really know if it even feels like it you guys may have to correct me on that we got titans assistant coaches being hired and nobody wanted to listen to me ramon nobody (laughs) wanted to listen to me i know i know i'm shane bowen i've been trying to tell these people you called it yeah Week after week after week. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but here we are, (laughs) Shane Bowen as the defensive coordinator, Todd Downing promoted to assistant coach. But we'll start with the the place where these two gentlemen specialize. They are multi-tool players. They can go all over the place where we need to go, but we start with the obvious. Uh, What the hell am I to make of your alma mater? Bowen, you take it. I was about to say, who wants it? (laughs) You take take that mic. You You take that mic. (laughs) I, I proudly take this one because I say this, man, as much as we've been through these last 10, this last decade plus, um, it was good to have two guys and Danny White and Josh Heifel come in and not just, I don't want to give you a, I don't want to give you a cliche answer by saying this, but it's just one of them like, man, it feels like a football coach finally. It feels like an AD that, that knows the business inside and out. I mean, hell, this whole family is a part of some type of administration like you can have family full of athletes doctors lawyers like his family is full of like administrators so as far as like knowing what he was getting himself into you know he sought the advice of his dad his brother who's a coach his sister i think is the ad also i found out she was married to a uh i think it's arizona representative so like they got a, a lineage of a bunch of different like people that know how to delegate i guess is what you're saying so danny white knows who to get himself into the, the impression I got off of um, Josh Heupel um, when he came on our show and just hearing him on other people's stuff too was, it's going to be a no, I don't want to say no nonsense, but at least to the public, he's not going to try to be your friend and buddy, buddy. He's here for a job. And he know, my feeling was, he know this job is big. It's, it's one of those ones that like, all right, I can either make or break myself here. I'm not either going to continue to be a head coach or I can fall down to the ranks of an OC a position coach. You can go be Derek Dooley and, uh, and Coach Pruitt and with the Giants. It's the next step if he doesn't succeed here. That's, that's, that's what I got from him. So it's kind of good. I'm seeing the pictures. Of course, the optics are always going to look good. But he's in the weight room. He got to get very familiar with those kids fast as ever. And then I think day one of his job, he's calling the in-state recruits to try to get familiar with them. Uh, we've been not known for a lot of uh, high-end, four-star, five-star recruits. But the class of 2022, is full of those and you got clemson alabama ohio state georgia all in our backyard and um i would love to see us be a tennessee t- tennessee field team um but the beauty of tennessee is this though 
those areas, those, 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 those states and schools are, are just named out. Um, I was, I have a group of friends that are full of those type of guys though. Tennessee is one of those things I'm sure Ron can tell you it's a melting pot. Like it's going to be good to get the in-state guys. Um, but I think the way Tennessee has always been, Ron, I'm sure know people from Jersey, Atlanta, mm-hmm. Virginia, New York, Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Texas. Yeah. My, that's my friend, friend group when I uh, went to the University of Tennessee. It's cool being there because it is at Melton Pot, but it was good to see him put an emphasis on in-state talent. I totally, totally agree with, with what Ramon's saying, man. You, you look at it and you got Danny White coming into a situation um, where, uh, I, let's be honest, a lot of people didn't want to be. And to get a, a fresh, refreshing breath of fresh air coming in and this guy wanting to be there. You know, it wasn't any, like Mo said, key cliche answers um, of saying, you know, I'm going to get to know the boosters. And, nah, we're getting this, this university in check to where it's supposed to be. We know the tradition. We know the history. We're done talking about that. We're moving forward to get to this point. So I like that in Danny White, man, and them being able to hold things close to the vest and know how he, he wants to run this ship. That's fine with me. And you got to look at his track record. Like Ramon said, man, it, it goes it, it goes from, from pops all the way to, to daughter-in-law, to brother-in-law, whatever it may be. But um, it, it's a recipe for success, you know? And then you go to Josh Heupel. He's a guy also, you know, I don't think he wows you in any of his press conferences or his radio interviews, but <laughs> he's a guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a guy though that I think you can look at as an old ball coach and it remains to be seen, but the relationship that he's going to build with these players, the product he's going to put in the field, I, I'm all for it. You know, I, I don't want to hear the the brick by brick. I, I'm, I'm done with that. You know, I don't, <laughs> don't give me hopes. Don't build me up no more. Show me what you can do and let's get to it. That's what I like with him and Danny White. And I think they go hand in hand because he said he asked the kids, what do you want? Do you want a, a coach to come in here and build a program three to five years from now? Or do you want some immediate satisfaction? And that's what they wanted. They said, we want to win right away. We feel like we got the talent in this locker room that we can win right away. And that's what he went out and got. So he got a guy that he trusts in, he believes in. Um, he's had success with at UCL, brought him here. Um, this guy's coached in the SEC. Mm-hmm. What else What else, What else? else you looking for? He checks all the boxes you know, right there on the list immediately. Now we go to spring practice and see what it puts on the field, see how these guys react to him, see who he can bring in as far as recruiting his coaching staff, see where this goes to. And I think that's that's the biggest thing, man, getting back to what Tennessee is supposed to be. And that was always a product on the field that was going to go out and give us all for the state of Tennessee and the university. I- I'll say this too, the, the last two points that really stuck out to me, well, but aside from mentioning kids, which is the most important component of it, component of it. He said, uh, Danny White said this, he was like, I'm not a guy that golfs. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'd rather be in my office. <laughs> you guys know, like I know, like if you've been pulled to go on the golf course every other day, then you're probably not really focused on your job. You're probably working on your next move. That was one thing right. I was like, okay, so he's letting the boosters know like, hey, look, we can meet, but we're probably going to meet in a restaurant to talk or we're going to yeah. meet at my office to talk. That was really, really cool. And then the other part was this, the fact that he's been kind of, uh, I guess, Josh Hyper, Coach Josh, Josh Hyper has been real, I guess you can say bland about his conversations on air. Um, I, I guess you can go to the Nick Saban effect of that. Nick Saban is just real straightforward with everybody in the media, give you good answers, but look, I'm all about my guys. And that's one thing that you can always count on with Nick Saban. It's like, man, even for the kids that's been in trouble, I'm trying to see if I can pull that um, that audio from him when one of his guys got into trouble. And the thing that you would appreciate about him, which just seemed, seems that that's how Josh Heupel is, good, bad, or indifferent, he's going to support you until yeah. he can't know more. And that's something that I feel like I took from him because we're, we want a lot out of the interviews, right? <laughs> but... You also got a, I think he's guarded in the sense of like, man, I like y'all, but my focus is inside that locker room on that playbook and on that field. I love that about what we heard from him anyway. And, and, 
Here I, I am. Buck, real quick, Buck. No, you got it, Slay. He did it. Did it. He don't need, we don't need him out there on, on with the boosters on the golf course because I picked up my golf game in the pandemic and I want to get out there with the boosters. <laughs> Leave all the room for me, Buck. Leave that for me. <laughs> <Let's close the laughs> you better lock that damn door as a wise man, man immediately said. Here I am trying to queue up a tease, go rate, subscribe, review to the uh, J Mart and Ramon podcast where you can hear. Our friend Ramon Foster and his co-host yes, Jake indeed. were interviewed Josh Heupel and Slay's dumping on the interview. Ramon's dumping on the interview. I'm out here trying to be a professional. Nah. You're out here sandbagging me. You can hear both of these gentlemen, by the way. Uh, Ramon, 6 to 10 a.m. weekdays on 104.5 mm-hmm. The Zone. Slay been uh, pulling more than his weight on radio waves across the state. He done he done Nashville radio today. He's yeah. popping over into Knoxville radio today. And yeah. His podcast making me and Ramon look good. These uh, these are two of the hardest working uh, gas bags that we have around here. <laughs> now what filled me up then? That's right. That's I'll right. take it. <laughs> no, but that, that's where I, that's where I'm at with Danny White. Like I, I, I like the, you know, it's, it's resoundingly sold to me by people who I know that I should trust in college football that this is, a, it's it's one of the rare moments where Tennessee is just across the board praised. And I'm wow. saying, okay, you know, this is, this is a legitimate commitment. It's a big old financial commitment to bring this man yeah. out of Central Florida and put him there in Knoxville. Now let me see what you can do with the job that you are immediately going to have to hire. Because as far as I'm concerned, I mean, Rick Barnes has a basketball program in good shape. Everything else is is far on down the list. You don't want to discount the the importance of the other sports, but you know that the two money makers are football first and foremost, and basketball right there afterwards. Right. Now you got to focus on this football program, and you go out and you and you tell me if you're Danny White, you tell me in the press conference, you tell the people that this is a nationally exhaustive search, and yet you hire the guy who you just hired three years ago, who was sitting in your yeah. backyard but said that was the only person that you offered. This was the guy that you wanted. This was the guy that you went out and get. And yet there's a nationally exhaustive search. So I'm, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, I will accept that because of where the university of Tennessee is right now. You have to have relative expectations, which Vol Twitter is not about. And Danny White Mm -hmm. is going to learn real quick what Mm Vol Twitter Mm -hmm. is about. But I guess the way that I'm looking at Josh Heupel even before he coaches his first game, his first spring practice, whatever, I'm okay with him not necessarily being the 10-year solution. And I think the thing that I look at Danny White with the most optimism about is I'm not, I'm, he has to prove to me that he is not going to be too married to his guy to where if Josh Heupel's the dude to get them through these next couple of years, which is going to be difficult with all the NCAA sanctions that people keep talking about and nobody has yet to see, at this point, I'm okay with him getting through that process, but not necessarily being the guy for the next 10 years and going out and making another hire that's going to take them to the next level. I don't know if that's the way that everybody else is looking at this hire, but that's kind of how I'm looking at this head coach. Yeah, I kind of look at it a little bit different. You want to go ahead? No, go ahead. Go ahead, Mo. All right, I, I kind of look at it a little bit different. The NCAA thing is, is something that I think we're going for a while. I think uh, I was watching the uh, SEC Big 12 uh clash up this past weekend they said oklahoma still going through their uh they're still trying to sift through their sanctions that, that they got to deal with yeah. um you you talk about him hiring his buddy you know bringing in the guy that he's familiar with you got to realize if you said it was nationally uh sought after search then you got to realize that this probably it probably wasn't a whole lot i think they reached out to texas that may have tried to get somebody else i think it was more to it than we know you see that danny white tried to keep everything a house their relationship is one of those ones I feel like he's going to trust them until he can anymore. Um, what I saw from them and what I appreciate from, from the presser that Danny White had when he introduced him was when asked about, you know, how are you going to try to, you know, help him figure out his staff, he pulled himself away from it. It's like, you, you got that right. That's his staff. He's going to have to figure that out on his own. And you guys know like anything like, well, if you're able to do what, you, what you're able to do at A to Z, Ron, you're able to do what you want to because of the freedom and you can create, you can do a whole lot of stuff behind that. When you don't have somebody over your shoulder, hey, what are you doing? I, I think you should do that. Then you work a little bit better. Um, I'm hoping he's more than a two to three year coach. Uh, he's been in the SEC. Um, as far as it being a nationwide search again, I'll say this. I feel like it had to be somebody from at least the Southeastern District of the United States. 
somebody that's at least coached in it as far as being familiar with what's expected. And he had not acknowledged a lot of those things in his presser. Uh, Josh Heifel did as far as saying, hey, we got to be this type of team and get these type of guys. And um, if it works out, I think it could be a long-term solution. Again, I'm slow to go, but I'm always support though too. Yeah, I, 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 I share the same sentiments, man. No, no doubt about it. I think with Danny um, getting a guy, that's like me stepping into the air and you ask me, can I get a co-host? You go get a co-host. Of course, I'm going to get Ramon. It's, it's no question about it. It's hands down because I, I know I can depend on him. I've been in the fire with him. This is a guy I've seen work, you know what I mean? And it's stable. And if I leave, he leaves. And if if y'all want him to go, I'm fine with going too because I stand I stand behind him and the product that he's going to put out there. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's the same thing with Danny White and Josh Heupel. You know, mm -hmm. he's a guy that he, he felt like he's coming into it. And I think you got to see with him holding everything close to the vest by saying, um, by not having any leaks and saying who's going to be hired or whatever it may be, who the coaching search was. Just as much as he could do that, it's just as easy to say, Hey man, we're going to talk to the to, to the assistant coach at Clemson. We're going to talk to Bob Stoops or Steve Spurrier, whoever it may be, and put that out there. So I think he's good at manipulating what he wants to be out there and what you're going to get. And he's good at keeping everything else in the house. So it's fine with me. That's what we need at Tennessee. It's been too it many. Was. It's, it's been too many other voices involved, especially with the coaches. You know what I'm saying? Them having to answer. The different guys, you know what I mean exactly you know what I mean like and then you got Twitter being able to take over uh and, and take over a whole coaching search like <laughs> it's it, it's no way you can be taken seriously if I'm gonna come in as the AD and I let Buck make all my decisions from his phone at home after dropping the cats off Slay I'm that's doing that anyway that's what I'm doing <laughs> <laughs> people are paying me to do that Slay I'm, I'm, I'm out here running the world from that app you can't I, 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 man, I, it's facts man it's facts but you as an AD you can't go with that man like you got to be able to stand your ground and tell what you're gonna do but at the same time not come across as a butthole you know what I'm saying? Like he, mm -hmm. he he replied on Twitter and had a little fun to let Vol Nation know, I see you, but I'm still working over here. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think I think it's gonna be all all good, man. And um, like Ramon said, I hope he's he lasts more than two or three years. And with a pass happy offense and, and an octane high octane offense like this, I don't see why he couldn't last. Even with honestly going with average average years the first two years, you know what I'm saying? Like if you can get those fans in the seats and squeak out some games, but there's high scoring and it's exciting, we were tired of watching games where we could predict the plays, man. Like, this ain't the Tecmo Bowl. You got three plays up top, three plays on the bottom. You get to watch my plays and you get to guess if I'm going sweep or I'm going drop all the way back to the end zone and throw it up to Tim Brown. Like, that's out, man. This is a new generation that's going on out here. The game has evolved. That's what we want to see on Rock. I, it's so much better when it's it's so much better when it's done on Twitter oh though. Slay like, like inject that <laughs> right into my neck. Are you kidding me? That my first year living in Tennessee was the Butch Jones lame duck year, mm. and then everything that resulted afterwards. Mm. And I thought wow. that there is nothing better in the world of sports than a Tennessee coaching search. I need this. I need this every three years. It gives me life. And we we and by the way, in this current cycle of Tennessee, we're about a year and a half away from somebody notable from the university getting up in front of the boosters and saying the balls are back and we're gonna get a piece of everybody's ass. No, yeah. I can't no. wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Uh -uh. You uh -uh. stop. I think, right now. I think we've learned. I think we learned from our mistakes, Buck. <laughs> no, you gotta you gotta show you gotta prove it to me. You gotta we're prove done. it. To me. There you go. You need to see the product also. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, but I I do, I do, at least in terms of like, and we'll move on after this because this is, you know, this is largely old news, but we haven't gotten to it in depth. And you two are obviously very closely associated and, and, and uh, to the University of Tennessee. Um, my, my thing with, with Danny Heupel is, yeah, he, he got a little pissed off about leaks coming out the night before yeah. about Josh Heupel. Mm. But ultimately, that was as professional a coaching search as the University of Tennessee has conducted in yes. certainly my lifetime ever last like I don't know like tw at least the last 12 years for a, a remote saying ever uh and and it's just the lack of mess 
-hmm. Like mm -hmm. Philip Fulmer will always be held in high regard by the University of Tennessee and, and the alum and, and everybody that's come through there and respects the, the history of that program, rightfully so. But that man was so damn messy about the way that he went about these things. And it's, there's a history of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. it just can't, you can't be in that position and cause a greater commotion than would otherwise be caused. And understanding that Danny White's been on the job for about two weeks, at least I didn't see evidence of that. That is a starting point for me to begin to, to gain trust in Danny White as an athletic director and in the, in the choices that he makes and the hires that he chooses to bring in. There you know, it is. I mean, you, give me this one more. Give me this one more because I'm going to be quick on this. I'm going to be quick on this. To defend Coach Former, too, um, I will say a strong AD shields him from that. So you never heard about any of this when Doug Dickey was the AD. You know, you didn't hear about this until the, the evolving door of the carousel of the Mike Hamiltons and the Dave Hartz and guys like this coming oh, in and out God. of the University of Tennessee. And that put him in the forefront to be able to, to have to ask the question because these guys weren't brash enough or, and I hate to say that, man, because I, I, I love Mike Hamilton. Um, he was my AD when Doug Dickey left. But, like, these guys wasn't the guys to stand up in front of everybody and say, hit me first, mm. knowing that you got, a, you got an army behind you. So, Phil uh, took that yeah. place. And I think he took a lot of shots. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't necessarily his role. So now I believe with a Danny White in place, we do have a strong AD that stands behind not only the athletic program, but most importantly, the flagship, which is the football program. So I think it should be a different outcome. Yeah, yeah I'll just say it quickly. Coach Fulmer ran it like I would have ran it. I was a fan. I wanted mm -hmm. nothing but good to come out of it. I hope everybody felt like I did. It's just when you got that type of experience though, and it, you, it was just so, he didn't have a whole lot of experience is what I'm right. saying. And it was just so bad. Mm -hmm. um, he ran it with his emotions probably more than anything else, man. I think we've heard the, uh, I think it was uh, Hyatt that said, that was a Jim Hyatt that said that, that he, the, the T debacle right now is because mm -hmm. Fulmer supposedly promised T a two year extension if he took that pay cut this year. Mm -hmm. So again, he ran it with his emotions. And uh, we talk a lot about the money aspect of, of, of sports, NCAA and uh, college football. It's got to be one of the biggest pumpers of money, period. Mm -hmm. So it is a business is what I'm saying. You got to really take your emotions and um, your, your, your alumni status out of it when it comes to making those type of decisions. Uh, NCAA about to get back into the money-making business. They're announcing that they're bringing back the NCAA football video game and the world is celebrating. It's, yes! it's, it's the first time in, in my lifetime that the NCAA <laughs> has been celebrated across the board for anything. First. They bring back the video game. Everybody's it. naked in the streets. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I love Unbelievable. every minute of it, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I, don't make it, I don't make it the majority of my professional career without this NCAA uh, uh, football game. So wow. I like to put that out there. Yeah. Took up a lot, up a <laughs> lot of my time. Wow. Yeah. Took up yeah. a whole lot of my time. A lot of it. And I loved every minute of it. How about that? You're, 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 ain't, ain't nobody here pushing back on you. This man this why I here get defensive about it. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, I was, looking for, I was looking for somebody to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, there plenty of people want to say something to Mike Vrabel. We got to talk about what the hell yeah. this man is doing with the, the coordinator decisions. It was news dumped on a Friday. Uh, myself, mm -hmm. I didn't get a crack at it until, well, I got on, on, on the zone. I did the Blaine and Mickey show and just ripped mm -hmm. into people like, what the hell? I've been trying to tell you. Nobody want to listen to me, Ramon. Nobody want to listen. I know. But here know. we are. Todd Downing promoted to uh, offensive coordinator from tight ends coach, defensive coordinator, Shane Bowen, getting a promotion out of a historically a bad defense. Um, I have my thoughts and I'll fill in the gaps uh, where you guys want to take it, but what what was your initial reaction, Slay, to to the decisions that Mike Vrabel made? Well, I'm gonna be honest, man. Downing, I, I had no problem with, you know, because you know, it, it, I, I, offense wasn't a problem to me. You know, he was uh, schooled on the Arthur Smith. You know, he got to got to know the guys, and he was the tight ends coach, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mean, we saw success with John o. Smith and him being able to relate to him. And um, even when the offensive line went down, him being able to stay in the block a little bit more. So the schemes I feel were there and getting guys to buy into schemes. I think that, that trickles down from Arthur Smith to him. My problem is with Bowen. Um, 
Now, with the defensive coordinators that are out there, um, you're not even you're not even going to knock on the door to see if you can bring somebody else in. Like now I'm not privy to know what was going on behind the scenes, but there's some guys out there, you know, that, that should be uh, looked at, you know, I, I would even be fine if he reached back to college and brought it, brought this guy fickle in with him. That, that, I, okay, cool. Uh, Todd this Bowles. Matter, yeah. Yeah. Todd Bowles down in Miami. Shoot, Gerard Mayo. He could have pulled him. Um, right up under the Belichick tree, you know, like, you know, this system, you know, a guy that gets it. So my thing is we're bringing Bowen in. He's been tutored under Vrabel since Houston brought along, brought along. So is this a situation where you get Vrabel in and he can manipulate and have the last word of what Bowen is going to do, or is he going to let Bowen stand on his own and Bowen come out and this is what we're going with, regardless of what you say, Vrabel, or is it Vrabel still wanting to have control instead of delegating responsibilities to where they are and you manage the team? Instead of managing the team, you still want to be able to dabble over in the defensive. And that's cool if you can do it. But we saw you can't do it. Besides the interceptions and takeaways, hey, man, the Titans are in trouble. Not being able to get off the field on third down. You know what I'm saying? And not being able to – and you finishing last in yards for getting – like. That you can't do that, man. You got to put somebody else in charge of that and not a guy that you tutored to run the defense like you run it where it wasn't successful. Ramon, I'm going to let you answer Slay's question. Yeah. Uh, you think Mike Vrabel giving up control over anything? No, I can't see it. Not right now. Absolutely <laughs> not. I've seen that's you know, a I've, hell no for the people. <laughs> yeah, that's right. a hell no. I've, hell I've no. heard this. This is a philosophy <laughs> I heard some coaches take on. Some take on the Andy Reid, Bruce Arians a t- approach to say, hey, um, I want to bring in the brightest minds. I want to get the best talent to coach up my team. I want to get the guys who are the best. And you know what? I want my tree out there. I want my guys to say, hey, when you look back on this, um, your Tony Dungy tree. Your John Gruden tree, like there's tree, there your Bill Parcells tree, like there's tree of guys that say, hey, they hire some bright, smart talent in this NFL. And I look at my group of guys out there, like it's like raising, I ain't gonna say raising your kid because it's men working for men, but that's what you do. And, and they're proud of it. Look at what Andy Reid tree has done. Look at what Bill Parcells tree has done. Tony Dungy's all the way around. The other side of that, uh, the other side of the tracks is this. Man, if I hire incompetent people to where I can get them to do what I want them to, um, they'll do a serviceable job because we're going to find good talent. Um, They're going to give some of the philosophy that I like and I feel like mine work well. But at the end of the day, you're going to be my human shield when it's time for me to fire somebody. It's easy for a coach to hire less talent and have job security because why? Let's say the run game is bad. You know, we'll just fire a running back coach and the OC will get another one. If this defense is bad again after two years of it, you know what? Coach Rabel's not on the hot seat. Mm-hmm. It's Shane Bourne who's on the hot seat. That's the way this works. You either are hiring guys to put them in position to be some of the best ever, or you find a way to say, you know what? Um, it was his fault. Now he can point a finger. Well, Coach, what are you going to do about your defense? Well, you got to talk to Shane about that. Mm-hmm. That's the sad part of it. Some people uh, feel like some people love to elevate people. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but you, Buck, run. Y'all look at the public perception of it, which becomes reality, says what? He can't take himself out of the equation and let other people do the job. Right. And that's not a good look, man, at least. And th- this is the part where I say it's not a good look. You're dealing with a team, man, that's fire hot on offense. Mm-hmm. Todd Downing, leave it alone. Do exactly what you're doing. Throw your wrinkle into it, I think, for, right. for themselves. Instead of running tempos, run some check with me at the line, man. Keep this offense out on the field so that – you ain't got to worry about this defense. Statistically, looking at this team, everything good that this offense did, the defense took away respectfully, okay? They won 11 games this year because of that offense. Imagine what they would have done if this offense would have been ranked 18, 15, if they were top 10. And here's Dean Pease, one of your guys that maybe you couldn't control. Maybe he wanted to put his own uh, mm-hmm. system in place. And now here he is coming out of retirement to Atlanta. Whether he's helping now, um, whether he's helping out Arthur Smith or what, you got to question yourself. <clears throat> he wasn't ready to retire. Mike Vrabel ain't questioning himself. Mike Vrabel <laughs> looked. At, Mike Vrabel looked y'all in the eyes. Not just you, not just Ramon and Slay, but everybody listening to the <laughs> podcast. He said double middle fingers. You know what? Yeah. We're running it back. Okay, yeah. 
this is yeah. how this thing is going to go down. All y'all be damned. And te- mm-hmm. just look, looked at, <laughs> looked at us over the Zoom in the last day of media availability. <laughs> said, man, I, you know, this defensive coordinator thing, it took on a life of its own. I, I You know, maybe I should apologize. Uh. Sorry. I'm sorry that this went down the way that it did. And Mike Rabel is entirely too smart to not think that media vultures like myself are not going to sink our claws into that and ride it all year long as soon as this right. defense sucks. My, right. my thing is, you know, I look at – because what, what Slay brought up is how many different, how many different uh, qualified candidates were out there outside yeah. of the guy that you had down the hall. Like, I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at Bruce Arians and Andy Reid and their media availability for the Super Bowl – and Bruce Arians is pissed off because everybody's talking yeah. about Eric Bieniemy as a head coaching candidate, and not a single solitary soul looked at Byron Leftwich. Now those are mm-hmm. offensive guys, but I think the very the very same thing applies to applies to hiring of assistant coaches or coordinators or things like that. Mm-hmm. Mike Vrabel doesn't have a problem hiring diversity, I don't think, or diversity no. of thought even uh, from that perspective. But bringing Terrell Austin as a, as an optics interview. And just say, yeah, look at this. This is, you know, we did this. At least we considered outside perspective. At least we considered another, uh, another, you know, somebody who's not our guy. And then just yeah. turned around and hired his guy because that was what he was going to do. That's why I've been yell- screaming about this, even during the season, screaming mm-hmm. about this. Be prepared for Mike Vrabel to bring Shane Bowen back because this is the plan. This is yeah. the plan the whole time. And they are not going to deviate from the plan, whether you want to call it stubbornness, whether you want to call it conviction whatever it is. And Mike, Mike's been right more often than not in his decision yeah. making in fixing the Tennessee Titans. I, I'm, I'm not going to discount him. He's made good coaching hires, but also he's a son of a bitch to work for. And everybody in the NFL knows this, knows this but, loud. But, but this is the point that, that you're making. I feel like you're saying like, yeah, you're right. But like, you can be right at like 90%. Yeah. 90% ain't going to win the Super Bowl when you got Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady and you got Deshaun Watson potentially going to a team and you might have the Colts that's going to go get a veteran quarterback. Carson Wentz back with Frank Wright. Yeah. You're not winning the South automatically anymore. Right now is your opportunity, at least into Trevor Lawrence, we think, get up to speed that you're walking your shoe in for the AFC South division. The other side of it is that just ain't enough. If you're looking for somebody to do something – but we talk about all the time. We're on the window right now. You close this thing out, it's over. The Titans are in a window where they have a good young enough quarterback, a damn good all-world running back. An offensive line is just now hitting the 30s. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to figure out what you're going to do. AJ is solid. Corey's up. What I'm saying is this, that window closed. Ron, you was on that ride with me. Yeah. My second yeah. year, we go to the Super Bowl. And I said after we lost that game, lost that game to Green Bay, I said, we'll be back. I'm sure Green Bay said the same exact thing when they won it. Yeah, oh, right. we'll be back. Mm-hmm. Them or us hadn't been back yet. Right now, they went to the, the, the AFC Championship last year. They did sniff it this year. Mm-hmm. What I'm telling you, you got to go all in. Look at what the Rams are doing. This, I know it's comparing apples to oranges because it's two separate teams, but they're going all in, man. If you're going to be serious about making a run, you got to do some adverse things. You got to do some out-the-box stuff. Because again, in year two, what was it, year four or five for Aaron Rodgers at the time? He said he was going to be back. I said the same exact thing, and we hadn't sniffed it yet. Yeah, that's tough, man. That's tough. And you got to get out there and make a splash, man. Like like Ramon was saying, you got to take take the opportunity that you're given, because if you don't, right now, you don't know what, what happens with injury, who leaves, whatever may happen. Like, this shelf, like, what is this, Derrick Henry's sixth year? Coming yeah. up, fifth year, like fifth year, oh, coming fifth. fifth year, fifth year coming up. So, hey, it's, it's, he's knocking on the door of being a old well, running backs. back right now. So, I mean, you need to do what you got to do, man, to get over that hump. And if you can't increase at least, at least get into midway, I ain't saying you got to get to a top 10 defense, but at least you got to get between 15 and 20, man. You got to make an increase. And if you can't do that with the same alignment. You can't do this with the same strategy and you can't do that without having a playmaker that can go make a play when you need to make a play. Now I'm granted now the Simmons and everybody that that's great, but you got to have somebody like Kansas city has on the other side of the ball. Yes, you can man. almost bet a bottom dollar that Tyron Matthew, a playmaker would do something in the super bowl. Would do something. Or Frank Clark. Or Frank, yeah. Like you got guys on that side of the ball as high octane as they are on offense. 
that defense will go and make a play also. Chris Jones, like they yeah. have guys oh all God. over the place, man. You got to do mean, it, man. But you, you guys it. have played for enough coaches that you got. I mean, these guys are control freaks. It's mm -hmm. it's absolutely yeah. how, and it's you 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 have to be to a degree to be able mm -hmm. to do that job, and do that job well. But uh, the thing that I look at is you can't you can't cite to me continuity when all it does to all it does is send a signal to everybody that things are status quo that last year was good enough yeah, yeah you did great with takeaways you had 23 turnovers that kept you alive while your offense <laughs> was out here caving people's skulls in until they pooped themselves at, against the uh against the Baltimore Ravens in the the one and done wild, wild card round um, right. but you cannot you cannot put you cannot put this together and he's essentially absolving the coaching staff of any fault and which you know yeah. I don't I don't necessarily I don't necessarily take that from him because the players they had on defense throughout the course of the year sucked out loud like get yeah. out of here get out of here with Wyatt Ray get out of here with Tuzar Skipper <laughs> get out of here with Laurel <laughs> Murchison like none of these people none of these people mm -hmm. are yeah. going to be able to generate any kind of <clears throat> competent pressure any kind of competent defense at all and you had to work with the parts you had but I mean I've talked about this on every platform that'll let me gas bag in front of a microphone <laughs> players were not be not able to digest the defense as a scheme like they no. were caught up every time they got in front of a microphone or a zoom to talk to us and say communication man I'm looking at that like a cry for help like do yeah. something. somebody help us and that's all yep. the coaching. they don't they don't get off the hook because the players were bad and that's on John right. but uh, the coaching was not anywhere close to up to par yeah. No, not at all, man. And again, you heard guys kind of said it a little bit like identity, communication. Like that goes to if you have somebody driving you and they tell you exactly where you're going, do you know what the hell to do? Yeah. Like that's what they're missing right now. Again, like you said, it falls on the guys. I think <clears throat> Big Jeff may have hit a little bit of his first real rookie, rookie wall. Mm -hmm. um, early on in the season, about first six games, lights out. I'm talking mm -hmm. about all world. But when you're – Giving up a lot of you not getting to the quarterback the way you need to, it can probably be a little bit discussion. Bayard already acknowledged that he had a down year, promised to be better, mm -hmm. but you got to make decisions at the cornerback position. Um, yeah. What is Malcolm going to do? Um, you got to talk about your Jayon. I mean, there's a, there's some questions to be asked. I, I think Daquan is a uh, is a free agent, and yep. he's been flirting with Atlanta. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be shocking if he went down with Dean Pease to Atlanta, man. So. You got to find a guy. I do like to see our Tart kid. I, I think for mm -hmm. an undrafted free agent, he can make a splash. But there's going to be, there needs to be a sense of veteran leadership on that side of the ball. Jeff's a young guy, and he might be pulling on guys to do the right way, whether it's Bayer or who else else. But um, I know we keep bringing up Jarrell Casey and his leadership, but the value of a, the value of a player sometimes goes a little bit further than what they produce on the field. You yeah. take it for what you want. So I know my last two years in Pittsburgh, I, I, I played well, but my value on bringing guys along, like not afraid to, to have a young guy and be like, hey, man, you got to do this. I don't care about you taking my spot. You won't, but I don't care about it. Like, you I'm going to teach you everything you need to. <laughs> you won't. I, I, I am a competitor, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying in the sense of like spreading some knowledge to the young guys. Bringing a young guy, hey, man, we live at, uh, be here 530. We, we in the weight room by 545. You know, it's creating a culture. And um, they may have strayed a little bit. I won't disrespect them by saying they have. But what did you see out there to say, hey, mm -hmm. yeah, they got a, they got a, 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 a worldwide leader on their defense. You can't see it. Yeah. I, 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 Simmons, Simmons is going to be a great player for here for, you know. He will. Probably. But he, and he's 100% trying to, to get in that role. Right now, he's just a big old show pony. God love him. He's breaking down the huddle. He's getting the people hype. He's running out the tunnel. with. The, I mean, he, he's doing it. He's doing yeah. it. But yeah. I think, I think uh, Ron, to, to Ramon's point, like Simmons, Simmons got substantially worse. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one parallel uh, to draw between these two things. But Jadavion Clowney attracted attention. Mm -hmm. more than yeah. anything Jadavion Clowney attracted attention and as soon as everybody locked in on Jeff Simmons up front Jeff mm -hmm. Simmons was not doing the things that everybody was uh you know fawning over Jeff Simmons yeah. from doing and I don't know what the hell you do with that guy but I was, I was sitting there screaming on y'all's radio station yesterday <laughs> you better you better not bring him back yeah you better not spend that money to get Jadavion Clowney you bet right. hell no there's been a right. lot of hell no's on this podcast <laughs> right. hell no
right, right. <laughs> and that's 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 with this Titans team, you date back, you know, with this being a new regime, you don't want to go and repeat. And I tell Ramon this all the time when we're just talking about the Titans and the football oh, franchise. God. Like, you don't want to go back and go back to those 98 years, 97 years, and 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 repeat what the, the mistakes were not signing guys, re-signing guys and keeping them here and letting them go out and they get in the free agency and you lose them and you got to rebuild and you think you can plug and go. Like he's saying, man, with the with the veteran leadership not being around, you think what if a what if a Kevin Carter wasn't here uh when when, when Javon Curse got drafted? You know what I'm saying? It's totally, totally different. You know, the 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 leadership of a McNair. We don't see that necessarily with this Titans team. And this being a new regime. You got to get guys here, and I, I go to that point because of Gerard Casey being uh, being gone. What if he was here to tutor um, uh, Simmons one or two more years? You know, yeah, and then they drop the yeah. market. Yeah, big, you know, so that 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 plays a factor to me. Like you said, that's not having that veteran leadership and being able to to school guys. That's priceless, man. And you ain't got that in your program. That falls on the management. The management. Um, Whiffing on 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 the pitches, you know, you bring in a Vic Beasley and a J, the Davion Clowney, and they don't get the job done. Then you then you look and you got Isaiah Wilson, and he ain't getting the job done. Like it's it's a lot of whiffs right now. And for this to be a new regime in the management, supposed to be doing things right and and changing it and it's tightened up and let's get it and we can do it and all that man, all that hoorah stuff, man, goes out the window, man. If you can't get the job done with the product. Man, but you can go on Isaiah Wilson's Instagram story right now, oh help him pick out his God. next piece of jewelry. Shaking life. Oh. <laughs> Shaking life. <laughs> um, look, I'll, Man, we, I got we, we had Lee Smith on this morning, just real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a, a white dude that's had, he played at UT, got kicked out the first month there, okay? you, you He'll tell you his story. He said a little bit of it this morning. And he kind of, kind of, you saw he go to that, he went into that dark spot in our interview with him. Not dark, but just like, hey, that's got, that got really real. And he said something, it's like, man, when he see a young guy that's going along his life as if, acting as, as if he's the best show on earth that nobody has ever heard of you, but you the best show on earth and you do this and you messing up and you don't really care about yourself enough. And he said this, I pull him to the side and I talk to him, I say, look. You're in this position right now to do everything you want to do in life. This is your opportunity because you guys know the minimum in the NFL right now, 600,000. Yep. Okay. It can change the trajectory of your whole entire family. If you do this first, if you do the things right, the thing about, I love and hate first rounders because I'm like, man, you damn good enough to get what you want to out of this thing. But let me see you mess up. And I'm a, I'm a really hate you because your platform on life, we're all even, but the first rounders platform is up here. Like, that's a hell of a springboard. And all you got to do is just be competent enough to make it to that next one. And if you don't, he said this, and it kind of resonated because it's the culture we live in. It's like you want to change the trajectory of your family, do what you want to out of life and live in that house you want to, buy all the things you want to, go to Cabo, go to wherever you want to, take all these first-class trips, private plane if you do the right thing. Or you want to sit back and have kids in a family and your kid wants these new Jordans that you can't afford to buy because you messed this up. You spent all your money. You parted yourself out of this. You got yourself arrested so many times. And I was just like, Lee, I got nothing else. I can't follow that up. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the truth. Think about the platform that's given. If you tell me at 21, 22 years old, for him, 20 years old, his minimum salary is $600,000. Why would you mess that up? Because you, you you're not smart enough to know any better. I mean that's the and and you're not listening to anybody else that's smarter smarter than you. That's, that's the big thing. You're not listening to anybody that's else that's it. smarter than you about this that has any kind of life experience. And I'm not here to sit. Uh, I'm not here to sit on this podcast and cast aspersions because yeah. I was an asshole at 21 and I didn't have any money. So yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> like, this guy. Everybody can relate to that on this. But mm -hmm. I I just I that's it's an entire it's a whole nother show. I know. I see it. You hate to see it. You, you hate, hate to, to see it. Watch it, and you watching it go down the drain. Yeah, Shit, it, it, half of it's live streamed. You can right. catch it. Exactly. You can, so you're, you're literally like, watching it. You watch your shit implode on your phone. That's right. a, it's a right. tough scene. What is not I a guess. tough scene is our friends Ramon Foster and Ron Slay uh, here on the Six One Five Sessions podcast. Mm. You can follow the Slay Ride at Ron Slay Thirty Five on the socials. You got the Boom Boom Room. You got the sleigh ride down in Knoxville. You can hear him on 104.5 The Zone, just like Ramon Foster. 
6 to 10 a.m. on J Mart and Ramon 1045 The Zone. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever it is that you get your podcast at Ramon Foster on the socials. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure to have you guys it on the line today. Hey, man. We got to do this again, Buck, man. I, I, I had a blast. I had a blast. <laughs> was, we need we need after hour. We need an after hour session. That's what we need. Uh, see? Hey, listen, as soon, as soon as you get me the hell out of this pandemic, Slay, I'm going to be drinking Don Julio on the rocks with a little bit of lime in the hey, room, room with from one of my rice. trees. <laughs> with, the, with the lemon tree. From one of my trees. <laughs> what my trees? The lemon trees, not that kind of tree. The oh, lemon yeah. tree. Hey, <laughs> hey, who said that? Where's Snoop? Hey. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> hey, ain't no doubt.